Welcome. The subject of this video is going to be the LM317 high power constant current source. This is a this was there's an older video that I released several years ago and this is going to rehash some of that, but it's going to have a lot of upgrades and a little more theory to it. This is the basic circuit here in itself. It consists of a PNP power transistor, an LM317 small bypass cap, and a single resistor that sets the current through the LM317. That's it. That's the whole circuit for components. How this works is the LM317 acts as a constant current source. This controls the base current through this pass transistor and the base current is multiplied by the HFE of the transistor and, is the, and becomes the output current. This is the actual circuits as constructed. The one on the left is a variation of the one below circuit diagram you just saw, but I replaced the resistor with a potentiometer. The one on the right here can actually be switched on and off with an Arduino and can be pulse width modulated. We will cover all of that in this video. The concept of the LM317 constant current source is simple. You divide R1, whatever the value of the resistor is, into 1.25 volts and that will give you the output current. So looking back at our earlier little diagram here, how do I determine my current in the case? Let's say in this example I desire a 2 amp output. Let's pull out our calculate, handy calculator. I want a 2 amp output. So I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to divide it by the HFE, which I measured at 148, equals, and that comes out to be 13.5 milliamps as, I've, as I'm showing here. Now to determine the value of R1, I would divide 1.25 by 13.5 milliamps. 1.25 volts divided by 0 0.0135 amps and it comes out uh, to 92.5 ohms. There's no such thing as a 92.5 ohm resistor. Your closest resistor value is going to be 91 ohms. Place that in there and you're very close to the two amps that you need. All right, let's look at some really big changes in your basic circuit. As far as Q1, the LM317 and the bias resistor, they are all the same. Now we're going to add some additional components. First of all, you note there's a 0.5 ohm resistor going between the power input and the emitter of Q1. This is called a ballast resistor. This is supposedly will offset what is called thermal runaway. When Q1 starts, when the temperature rises on Q1, its HFE or gain will begin to shift. What that means is the gain will go up regardless even if the uh, bias, base bias current doesn't change gain will start to climb, the output will start to climb, and this could feed back on itself causing thermal runaway. This resistor will drop the additional voltage and current to keep it a little more stable. D1 is simply a blocking di diode. This is going to be oriented towards a battery charger, and when you're charging batteries you need these diodes to keep the battery voltage from feeding current back into the charging circuit when the power supply is disconnected. Down here, between what used to go to ground and the LM317 CCS, 
we now have a switching transistor. The circuit is turned off as long as there's no as long as the enable pulse is low. No voltage in, transistor off, no current path for the base current through the LM317. Go high, transistor switches on, the entire circuit will switch on. I have used this thing can also be pulse width modulated or switched off and on under the control of a voltage sensing circuit or an Arduino. All right, let's note a few other things before I leave this diagram. You have, we're going to, in this example, I'm going to input 15 uh, volts of prox and the power in the circuit, since I'm using two amps, is approximately 30 watts. Now, the input power a small amount, 13.5 milliamps, is going to go through the uh, emitter base circuit, but most of the rest of the t 2 amps is going to be delivered, in this case, to a 5 ohm load. This is a series circuit when you get down to it. They've, the resistor is in series with the pass transistor, which is in series with the blocking diode, which is in series with the load. Like all series circuit, your power and voltage drops will divide. So we have a fixed 2 amps that's going to go to the 5 ohm load. That's going to create 10 volts. That is current times resistance will give you voltage. But voltage times current will give you power. So of the 30 watts, 10 volts and 15 volts at 30 watts, 10 volts and 20 watts are consumed by the load. The remaining 10 watts or so and the remaining um, 5 volts is distributed between the 0.5 ohm resistor, the emitter collector circuit of Q1, and the blocking diode. The blocking diode has a drop of 0.6 volts generally. Um, this at 2 amps, this will drop a volt and the remainder will be dropped across the emitter collector circuit of Q1. Now that I can switch my constant current circuit on and off using a microcontroller or voltage sensor, the obvious use for this circuit is to charge a battery. This is the same battery that I charged off of a TLM431 constant current circuit, constant current source with a TL431 voltage detector circuit. All I did was add my LM317 CCS circuit directly to the output transistor of the voltage detector circuit. Use VSET, set it for 13 or 13.7 volts, wherever you want to float it and it will charge up to that voltage and shut down. Notice the on LED. Anytime Q1 is turned on, the uh, LED will turn on. That means the battery is being charged. When Q1 is off, the LED will go off, of course. I didn't draw in the ballast resistor in this particular diagram. Let's look at another circuit variation. Everything up here is the same, except I replaced the little bipolar switching transistor with an optocoupler. I simply connected its internal NPN transistor in the current path, and this would allow me to switch the uh, current circuit on and off under either a voltage detector or Arduino or similar microcontroller and I am completely electrically isolated from this circuit if we're using something like an Arduino. Let's go a little further down. Here is our voltage detector circuit using the uh, TL431 again. Here is your um, on LED in this case. This is the LED half of the uh, optocoupler. 
that will be turned on when the voltage is below whatever the positive terminal voltage is set for, B set, and the transistor collector circuit or the optocoupler collector circuit is on the other half. And I hope this gives you some ideas what you can be doing. What am I coming up with next? Somebody was asking how to charge up a battery using uh, 20 amps. I'll be discussing that and I will, you will not be able to draw 20 amps to a single transistor. They are out there. You can get them. I say don't do it. The next thing I will be discussing is how to parallel uh, bipolar transistors. I already discussed paralleling MOSFETs. And let's see if we can parallel bipolar transistors. Please click the like button, subscribe, share, and so forth. Um, thanks for viewing this video.